Hey, welcome everybody. It is super to see you. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, August 10th. What we like to do on this show is focus in on OTC and penny stocks. I'm out there day trading all day and I'm looking for stocks that have maybe hot technicals on the chart, look like a breakout coming, or there's a lot of buzz on the forums or Twitter, or maybe there's just some great news. Now that's news I've personally read from the OTC markets over the last three or four days. The oldest is at the top, the newest is at the bottom. Now those are all penny stocks, but they're only on the OTC market. A penny stock can be any stock up to $5, and there's lots of those on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. So we'll be looking at those too. And the great thing about those sort of stocks is there's no transaction fees. So finding penny stocks in the major exchanges, you're making profit as soon as it's moving up, not trying to recoup your transaction fees. Now we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. Anytime I do research on an OTC stock, this is where I come. It's my number one stop for one reason. It's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all that pertinent information we're constantly looking for. So if you're constantly going over to Google, constantly sorting through old information, you're constantly wasting your time. Come here. Research shouldn't be a hassle. Find the site that gives you what you're looking for as soon as you find it. So let's take a look at how our OTC market fared today. Again, we got a mixed bag here. Our share volume isn't bad, but we did drop. We were over 15 billion, I believe it was yesterday. We're at 13.9 billion. Our dollar volume looks like it fell. It's gotten even lower, 1.3 billion. That is critical. Now, I honestly don't notice that the dollar volume changes how the market works, but let's face it, the more money that comes into it, the better. And our shares being traded, how many trades we've had today, that's one of the pieces of information we get on this site for every single stock or for the whole market. How many trades were there? We had 231,000 trades, which is low. 250,000 has been our low average for a while, and we have been up to a half a million, 600,000 as regular, so we are really low right now. The only thing that is holding up is our share volume over 10 billion. We definitely don't wanna see it under that. Now, I've got an array of stocks to share with you today. Some are starting to run right now. Some are going to have a run, most likely. And those are the kinds we like to find before they run. But the ones that are running today, you got to remember, a lot of times there's a huge spike, and then it will fall about 50% down. Give it a day or two, and then watch a second pop. That's a test. If it doesn't come below that 50% mark line, we're always drawing, that's probably going to bounce again. So we're going to be looking at stocks like that as well. I've got them ready to go. You ready to see them? Let's do it then. First stock we're gonna take a look at here is ticker PRRY, Planet Resource Recovery. Now this was one of the hottest stocks traded on the OTC market today. There was news that came out, there was a filing that matched it, and the investors loved it. There was like 600 plus trades on this stock. She finished today at a brilliant price, one cent on the money. Now why is that so brilliant? Because as soon as it hits two cents, you've made 100% gains on your investment. You've doubled your money going from one to two. Just that simple, just that quick. Hit three, you've tripled your money. Four, you've quadrupled. And going from one cent to four cent is not all that difficult. If you bought it at four cents, you'd have to go all the way to 16 cents to quadruple your money. Which would you prefer? Trying to make four times your money from four to 16 or four times your money, one to four? Right. <laughs> That's an obvious answer. She did about 66% gains today. She is on the pink tier. She is current. She has those precious green ticks I tell you in every video to look for. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. This is really important information. You'll actually see tweets over there that say, hey, verified profile just showed up on such and such stock. That's how important it is. No, not just to Twitter, but to everybody. So to see this, especially with the pink, is really good. So what does PRRY do? Well, I'm glad you asked. As I said, they just had news come out that matched their filing, and I guess they're on top of the ball because they've got their business description already caught up. This is exactly what they're doing. Planet Resource Recovery is a Nevada-based company that has recently acquired the intellectual property and tooling 
associated with the Max ATV, the all-terrain vehicle product line, and will begin manufacturing the Max ATVs. Now, these were originally manufactured by Recreatives Industries between 1970 and 2013. That video you see up there right now, that was a kid show I used to watch in the 70s. Yes, I used to be a kid. And those are the banana splits. And the banana splits all had buggies. We didn't have the acronym ATV back then. That was a buggy, and that is the exact buggy we're talking about. That is what they have now got the intellectual property to build. And the news expands on what they're going to do with this concept. They're going to start with the original, but I don't want to give too much away here. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, they're normally doing about 645,000 a day. Today, they had a huge jump up to 18 million. That's about 24 times her normal volume. Share structure, looking for that float. I always use the unrestricted shares. These are the shares that go on the open market. That's your float. Restricted shares are shares that don't go on the market. So even though they got a float listed here of 57 million, you can see it's outdated. I think that's wrong. I think it's closer to 200 million. That's how many unrestricted shares are on the market. So we're gonna go with 200 million. What are the financials for this company? Well, over the last four years, their revenues have been dropping. End of last year, they did 233 million. Is that improving? No, no, it's gotten absolutely completely dead. Just died away here the first quarter of this year. So obviously they've had a change of operations. They're just not adding to anything. What we see them doing now with this six wheel buggy, this ATV, that's gonna be their new business. Disclosures. Well, obviously their financials are all caught up because they're pink current. And I like to come down here, look for SEC filings, S1s or 8Ks, but we got nothing here. So let's jump on over to the news. So our news goes back to October of last year where they tell us they are looking for an acquisition. Then they tell us here in November they made one. They acquire Max Amphibious six-wheel drive all-terrain vehicles, which we were just talking about. And then they say they are generating revenues in April of this year. So maybe the next report we get, the next disclosure is going to show some money. Then they've got lots of news here all about that ATV and what they're doing. And then they brought out a piece of news today. They tell us in the news that Planet Resource Recovery recently acquired intellectual property and tooling associated with Max Amphibious ATV product line. The company is gearing up to recommence manufacturing of Max ATVs, which were originally manufactured by Recreatives Industries between 1969 and 2013. Our mission is to offer extraordinary off-road mobility to both consumer and commercial markets by manufacturing off-road vehicles with unique design features that give them the exceptional capabilities to transverse terrain that is impassable to most other types of off-road vehicles. The company's initial focus is on relaunching the recreational light utility Max all-terrain vehicle product line using the tried and true designs to help rebuild the supply chain and achieve acceptance more quickly in the larger global ATV industry, which is still expanding at a rate of over 1 million units per year. Now, this is a very interesting part here. I think this is where they're going to grab a lot of audience. The company's new Max Parts website will soon go live, which will firmly establish PRRY as the official supplier of genuine OEM Max Parts, original equipment manufacturers. The company believes this is a major step in reviving the Max brand as well as reawakening the customer base. There's a lot of people that own these things, but there hasn't been parts available for years and years and years, so they're probably sitting in sheds and garages just not being used. So all those people are going to have access now. And once they start riding them around, more people are going to see them and before you know it, they're going to be everywhere. And did you notice how they've improved them? It's nice to have the six wheels and be able to pivot and go through mud and all that, but that tank track that they put on it, goodness gracious, you can go over trees and everything. So I really think this company's got something going for it. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what it was doing today. So we're taking a look at PRRY on my free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. I got it when I signed up for my free trading account with TD Ameritrade. So can you. Just keep your account open and you can use this anytime you want. So this is a six month, four hour chart for PRRY. We've got a high bubble back here of 0.017 and a low here of 005. 
She has been under the 200 most of the time and then started having a rise and a climb here. And this goes from uh, March till June of this year. This is when they started talking about we're looking to make an acquisition. We are going to get the six-wheeled ATV company. We have closed the deal. That's all of that news. Very excited. And then for some reason it fell. I don't know if there's a piece of news that correlates to that, but that was a huge drop from a penny and a half down to under a penny. So she lost a big portion here, did not recover it, and has been falling ever since. Hit that low bubble, bounced, came right back down to it until today's news. Today's news was huge. That's a huge bar, bigger than anything going on here. And the technicals, they're all shooting for the moon. Every single one of them looks absolutely wonderful. 20-day, one-hour view. Not a lot going on here. We hit that low bubble. She bounced up. Actually capped over the 50 here, but had no strength to do it. Came right back down to a low and has just been sitting here for days until today's launch. Obviously, the news came out early and it took off. The first hour was where most of her gains were. All of the technicals look excellent. The RSI has pulled back out of the overbought, but is at a good solid 63. Five day, five minute. All right, so what do we got here? That is the fifth, that is the ninth. So we only had a little bit of trading on the ninth yesterday. Uh, pushed it up a wee bit. Pre-market, we did have a jump, and then she shot. And by, let's see what time we got there. Goodness gracious, quarter to 10. That's That was her high. She fell back from there, didn't recover anything more. So as soon as you've seen her falling, and let's come down to that one minute. So you had... Two green bars here. Now, I'm on the Heiken Ashi bar, so your bars are probably going to look a little bit different. But as soon as you started seeing she was falling, three bars is my max. If I'm in a morning play and it's running, 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 and we get one dip, okay, I'm a little nervous because I don't want to lose my gains. She starts going again. But as soon as I see, like here, okay, there was a red. Obviously, it started going sideways. I was holding, holding, holding. Not that I was in this, but I would have been. But as soon as I would have saw three bars, I would have been out. I would have been out. You know, maybe it bounces, maybe it doesn't. But if it doesn't, I've lost my gains. I would rather cheat myself on more gains than cheat myself on all the gains, right? So she did start to fall here. She crushed the 20. She came past the new 50-day, which is a little weird. But it looks like she came back up to it. I have this theory that when a new SMA appears on the board, the biggest one, looks like the 20 just appeared and the 50, that the price will gravitate to the strongest SMA. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens more often than I can appreciate. And it doesn't matter if it's up or down. It just goes to it. In this case, it appeared down below the high. She came down very quick, crashed through it, came back up like a rubber ball in the water, bloop, came back up on the top and surfaced. Had a big fall here at the end of the day and is starting to recoup. Looks like she's respecting the 20 more than she is the 50. Technicals, they're a mixed bag right now. Our PPO, which is like the MACD, you want to see the blue on top of the line. Both of these, no, we got a crossover on the MACD. She's falling. This is starting to turn direction right now. Uh, and our RSI is falling. So she doesn't look like she has a lot of pop left. A little bit more news may help this company. Now, I don't expect it to run. You know, it is recreational stuff. It is a vehicle, they, and it's not even electric. I didn't even read that it was electric. This thing looks like it's still petrol to me, so maybe they're going to bring out some news about it being electric. That was one thing we kind of missed, wasn't it? So PRRY was a hot stock today. Is it going to be a hot stock again? I think it'll bounce when it gets some news. That's just a feeling. Next stock we're looking at is ticker SING, Single Point Inc. They had news today. They had news a couple of days ago. They had news a week ago. They've had news regularly. They're expanding operations and things are looking good and they're building up momentum right now. She finished a day at 18.3 cents with just over 45% gains. They're on the QB, that's the middle tier of the OTC. The B stands for better 
It is better because you have to audit your financials to exist here. Remember what I was telling you earlier about the difference between disclosures and 10Ks and 10Qs? You have to have a CPA with the 10Ks and Qs. Well, that's all you're allowed to have on the QB. So all the numbers you're gonna get are actual factual numbers you can trust. Very transparent and trustworthy. We've also got those green ticks over here, lots more verified information. So she looks like a solid company. So what is this company about? Well, they tell us that SinglePoint is initially focused on building the largest network of renewable energy solutions and modernizing the traditional solar and energy storage model. The company is also actively exploring future growth opportunities in air purification, electric vehicle charging, solar as a subscription service, and additional energy efficiencies and appliances. And I can tell you just by reading one of the news presses that we're going to look at, they're just not exploring. They're into some of this stuff. That air purification is big business for them right now. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she normally does about a half a million. Today, she kicked it up to eight and a half million. So you got about 16, 17 times her regular volume. Definitely a strong increase. Our float, 71 million. That's not bad, folks. I'm not going to say it's a super duper low float, but that is not a high float. That is a low average float. So I like it. We got 71 million. What are her financials? Well, they've been up and down, haven't they? A couple years ago, they were at 3.3 million. Remember those zeros up there we got to put behind here. But at the end of last year, they finished at only 808,000 and only got to keep 72,000. Is it getting better? Yeah, it is, but not before it got worse. They were 158,000 down last quarter of 2021. First quarter of 2022, they jumped all the way to 1.5 million, and this time they get to keep $182,000. So things are getting better. Disclosures. Obviously, their financials are all caught up, and we've got an 8K, which refers to the information that we're going to go take a look at. So let's go take a look at that news. Now, as I previously mentioned, this company puts out news on a regular basis. So this only goes back to May of 2022. And you can already see they are working with their air filtration products. Box Pure Air is one of their new subsidiaries. Then they got another subsidiary here, Eco Adaptive. They did that in July. Now, one of the news presses I want to take a look at, because I think it's pretty big, California schools have started submitting finalized purchase orders for Airbox, Sing's new product line. This news came out August 2nd, and we don't actually have to go through the news. The bullets actually give us everything we need. As of July 27th, schools are allowed to begin receiving sales estimates that will be submitted to the state for purchase orders. Box Pure Air continues to leverage its value-added expertise by assisting California private schools to expedite purchase orders to ensure rapid deployment to improve indoor air quality as students, teachers, and staff return to school. $180 million in California was allocated to non-public schools as part of the ARPINS-2 grant that can be used to clean and filter indoor air, improving public health. Now, most of you are probably thinking of airborne viruses, COVID, monkeypox, stuff like that. From what I gather, that's really not the focus. It's more about forest fires. Whether you live near a forest fire or not, all you need is for the direction of the wind to change and your town is covered in smoke. You have got dust in the air. You have got soot on your cars. We had to run to the mall. I lived there for 10 years. We had to run to the mall to find fresh air to breathe. Their filtration system worked well, but schools, no. So the schools are the focus and it is about air quality with the forest fires that I've been able to gather. Then they had a piece of news come out today. This has to do with an acquisition that they made. Singleport acquires Frontline Power Solutions, a multi-state licensed energy service company. Single Point Inc. announced today the acquisition of Frontline Power Solutions, a multi-state licensed energy service company. What does this company do? They are a full service power supply solutions company, including supply, billing, auditing, renewable energy supply, efficiency consulting, and incentive coordination for large or small enterprises. The news goes on to tell us that Frontline Power Solutions is a comprehensive energy service company with the ability to operate in deregulated markets across the country. Frontline Power is licensed in nine states and has applied for and is awaiting final approval in 12 additional states. 
Frontline provides energy supply agreements to all sizes of commercial, industrial, and institutional properties. The FPS purchase is just the latest in Single Point's acquisition strategy, bringing in a growing collection of solar providers and energy solutions under one corporate umbrella. Single Point has acquired six subsidiaries thus far, including EnergyWise, Box Pure Air, Direct Solar America, EcoAdaptive, Boston Solar, and Frontline Power Solutions. And right now, the company is in 26 states uh, that offer deregulated power options. I don't know if you know what deregulated power options are. Again, when I was living in the UK, they had it. You would have one company that made electricity, but all these other companies would come in and buy boatloads of electricity for a real cheap price. And then come knocking on my door, and they would give me a guaranteed price cheaper than the electric company was giving me. And I'd get that price for a year. Then someone else would come to my door and try to beat that price. But they were all buying it from the electric company. But because they bought so much of it, they got it at a really good price and could actually sell it cheaper than the electric company. And that's what they're doing. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it is looking like. Well, of course, we're looking at a six month, four hour chart for SING. We got a high bubble here of 23 cents and our low bubble is actually in front of it at a nickel. We got a huge surge here. There's about 300% gains from about here. We had a news press come out where the company let everybody in on their plans, what they were going to do. Then it was followed by a second news press. They had their biggest order of airbox from 15 California schools, and everybody was excited about that. But you can see she came tumbling down under the 200, has been fighting to get over that 200, but has lost the battle for the last couple of months until the last few days. Last few days, the volume is increasing very strong. The price is on an increase, even with the dip in the middle. Technicals are excellent. All three are MACD, PPO, and ADX are pushing up, and our RSI is right around the overbought. 20-day, one-hour view. So we had a jump back here on the 20th of July. She was going pretty flat, got on top of the 50, actually on top of the 200, has been sitting up here pretty planted, 200 has been catching up to it. We see a poke here. It tagged it. As soon as it tagged it, it took off. Look for those tags, folks. Those tags are there for a purpose. It's almost like wrestling, tag team wrestling. As soon as you tag them, everything's good. Boom, we got a tag and it flew. And it flew here from uh, about 10 cents up to 17 cents. So you got a 70% gain right there. Then you had a solid drop and it bounced off of the 20. I know everybody thought it was done climbing, but this company's doing a lot. And she bounced off that 20 and surged today up to 21 cents. So in the last two days, she's had over 100% gains. Technicals are still ripping on the one hour. Five day, five minute. So there's our first jump uh, two days ago. That gave you a 50% jump. There's 70%. Right now, we're at over 100%. She has bounced. Well, she hasn't actually bounced on anything. She has tested the 50. Looks like she's turning around right now. The ADX is showing. Let me see. There was our fall. She went up, fell a little. It's hard to tell with the ADX. It doesn't matter what direction, up or down, it's pointing. You just want it to be going steady. Just a nice straight line. That shows you it hasn't changed direction. Once it changes direction, your trend on the price has changed direction. Our MACD has taken a serious fall here. It's got a crossover right now and it's pushing up towards the signal line. And looks like we got a crossover on the PPO. This is just like the MACD, except this works with the percentage of the price and this works with the price. So I would actually watch SING. They're doing a lot, they're expanding, they've got more subsidiaries that they're adding to just here in the last couple of months. I think this company's gonna take off. You're gonna get bounces, you always get bounces. But I think the company's got more to give. And if I back up, I just wanna get a peek here. Let's see, there is a support right there and we got one right here. She tried to break that. Wow, she's going for her high in the last six months, isn't she? She is definitely in this region right now. So I would look for her to actually hit this high of 23 cents and pass that. Ooh, we'd have to go back a year to see that. Oh, we definitely got to go back. Uh, somewhere around this area, which is around 25 cents. After that, she has a push to 45 cents. There was a big drop there. 
So I keep my eye on Singh. I like Singh. I think Singh is doing a lot of good for a lot of people and they're doing good business, solid business. Now, if you're tired of looking at the stocks that have already run and have fallen back and now we're just waiting for a bounce with fingers crossed, I've got a ticker for you. This is ticker Z-I-C-X, Zizix Corporation. Now, there's no catalyst on this company today, no filings, no news presses, but they had a news press about a week ago and there was a run on that news press and then there was a big drop and she's jumped a little bit up, but she's at a real good price of consideration. Why would you want to consider it? Well, the company just came out with a tweet today. Actually, they've had a few tweets and they're teasing the heck out of us about an acquisition that is going to be big. And that's what we're looking for. So she finished the day at 0031 with only about 7% gains. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got both those green ticks, so everything looks good with her. Now, they tell us in the description that the company was originally founded as a service provider to the healthcare industry. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly what it was they're doing, but they're still in the healthcare industry. All of their news points to that, but it looks like they're building hospitals and health facilities now. So what was the relative volume around the company, considering she had no direct catalyst outside of a teaser tweet? Whew, pretty good. Wow, she jumped from four and a half million to 58 million. I'm surprised there was only 7% gains. What's the share structure on this company? Pretty high. Yeah, we're about 400 million shares. Not a great float. Financials. Ooh, ooh, geez, they've got nothing since 2008. What about quarterly? We have absolutely nothing here. Now, I always get confused when I see this because if you're not making money, it's either because you haven't got a business, so you can't make money, which you would see Shell Company over here for that. Or you have a business and things are going bad, you're not making any money. They say Shell Risk. So why don't we see either one here? They're not making any money whatsoever. So hopefully what they've got planned is going to change that drastically. Disclosures. We know their financials are current and down here we haven't had anything since July. So let's jump on over to that news. Now, as I stated, they don't have any news today, no catalyst, but I do want you to see what has been going on with the company. Here recently, they made an acquisition. All this news is about that acquisition. We're going to jump into this one on July 2nd. Zisix acquires CTIP FII. They tell us that the Zisix Corporation has acquired CTIP First Investment Inc. CTIP is currently involved in the development of government infrastructure in different countries, including Africa and Latin American countries. CTIP, together with its strategic partners, is involved in the development projects such as hospitals and medical school buildings, hospital dormitories, roads and highways, government school buildings, banks' head office buildings, agritourism projects, and more. So what they did is they got themselves a property development company to do all their work for them. They now own it rather than hiring them. Now let me show you those tweets. I am going back here and just showing you a few of them here. This one came out August 5th. This is from Zisix Corporation Twitter account. Uh, finally, there are many ways against dilution. We will employ whatever legal means to protect stockholders' interests. That I can assure you. The next tweet on the 8th, good morning everyone. Please watch out for part 3 PR coming out soon regarding a hospital project where Ministry of Health and big health insurance companies have joined the development plan as strategic partners. Then we get one more here on the 8th, front page Africa leading and respected media organization came out with news involving big development in Liberia under the Ministry of Public Works with Zisix operating company CTIP. And today they have one as well. Good morning. Watch out for the news to be published sometime next week for a $300 million road project already signed by no less than the Minister of Public Works. Joining with us is one of the largest consulting engineering companies based in Rome. And that's what you got, folks. They're doing stuff. Their company's getting ready to do something. You got the uh, public minister who's on board. So everything looks great. We're just waiting for that next press release. So let's go take a look at that chart. 
Looking at ZICX six month four hour chart, our low bubble is back here of 002, and we had a high bubble here of just over a penny at 1.28. You've got two huge runs here. These are both synchronizing with the news presses with the acquisition of CTIP. And each time, it came right back down very quickly to the 200 day on the four hour. And it's been sitting up there pretty steady until here recently where she had a bad fall and is now starting to recover. Speaking of recovering, that's what our technical show. Our PPO is starting to turn back up, showing recovery potential. Our MACD has just had a crossover pushing up towards the signal line. And we've had the RSI climbing for a few days now. 20 day, one hour view. So we hit a high here, breaking the 200, she hit a high and then just gave it all away and more than that, she tumbled all the way down here to 0022, which our low back there was 002, so we're just above that low. She is now starting to push up very slowly, she's gotten above the 50 and is hanging on that right now. Our technicals actually look like they're pulling down, which is okay, right? We're looking at a stock that is probably going to run. Not right now. Right now, it's just being teased. Let's look at that five-day, five-minute. All right, so she's getting some rolls in here, rolling uphill, bouncing off that 50, right? She bounced here. She bounced here. She hit a high of 0044, which is double what we saw back here. So that's 100% gains right there. She's now taken another serious fall, took another serious jump, another serious fall. Folks, I see a pattern here. You know, if she doesn't come down to this area again, this might be a good buy-in area right here. First off, she likes to jump up to this area, up to the 004s. But you want to have a position before she bounces, before that news press comes out, before they announce whatever it is they're going to announce. So this looks pretty good right here. We are looking at a point where this keeps bouncing right here and she's come right down to that now. Looks like she's trying to push up. I would keep my eye on Zik, or better yet, I would take myself a small position on this. I'm presuming the news press is going to be coming out real soon. That is a presumption, but he made it sound like that, right? So, Z-I-C-X could be a punch when that news press comes out. We got one more thing I want to share with you here. Who's who? Does it really matter who's on the board of a company? Uh, yeah, it does. You get a name that everybody recognizes, watch the stock move. Here's a perfect example. This is a tweet that came out around one o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. Breaking news, Paul Pelosi Jr., Nancy Pelosi's son, was an unnamed guest during her tour of Asia and Taiwan. He also is on the board of two lithium mining companies, SXOOF, and ATAO. Asian countries produce more than 75% of the world's lithium batteries. So let's take a look at those two companies. This one ended the day at 50%, ATAO. It came out yesterday, the tweet, and from that point it jumped 150% and kept most of its gains and made another 50% gain today. SXOOF did 100% gain since that tweet came out. Lost about that much, but gained another 27% today. So yeah, you see a big name on a board of one of the companies, especially if it's news that just came out, you better get over there real quick. Big names always bring big price jumps. That's what I've noticed. So I gave you a little bit of this and a little bit of that today. We had some variety. I showed you stocks that had catalysts that were running that may run some more. I've showed you stocks that have potential catalysts and probably are going to run. And I even showed you stocks that didn't have any catalysts, they just had a big name got attached to them and they ran. You never know what's gonna make a stock run. But if you're doing your DD, you'll hear the buzz, you'll see the volume, you'll see the number of trades, and you won't miss out. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya, folks.